Welcome to part four in this series of videos where we will be creating a birthday reminders application using Blazor server. In this video we'll continue with the basic setup of the project, this time turning our attention to the SQL database, connecting the SQL database to Visual Studio and installing Dapper, but more of that later. As far as the database is concerned, I plan to keep this as simple as possible without being tempted to add additional tables or columns that will distract from the main purpose of emailing reminders. I think therefore we'll only need a single table, which I'm going to call the person table. The person table will have the following columns, a person ID, and I'm going to use a GUID for this. This is going to be the primary key for the table. The person's first name, the person's last name, the person's date of birth, the person's send reminder to will record the email address of the user adding the record. I did consider all kinds of other uh, fancy permutations on this, uh, but I've decided to leave it as simple as this. Deleting records can sometimes be something of a thorny issue. In some cases, it might be preferable to keep the record and mark it as archived or deleted. With this simple system, I don't think there's any need for this approach. I've therefore omitted an is archived column from the database. So what have we got to do? We've got to add a birthdays database to SQL Server Express, add a person table to SQL Server, add a connection string to Visual Studio, to the Visual Studio project and add Dapper and its dependencies to, Vis to the Visual Studio project. Uh, Dapper will be the package that we'll be using to interface between uh, Visual Studio and SQL. If you haven't already got SQL Server Express installed on your PC, you'll need to go to uh, the, the web uh, and do a search. Go to something like Google and type in SQL Express and follow, follow the, uh, the links. This is, this is as at February 2022 and the latest version of uh, SQL Server is 2019. Um, but scroll down and you'll see a download now button here against Express. Download that. You'll also need a SQL Server Management Studio. So if we go back to the search and type in SQL Management Studio and follow the links there, you'll find a download for SQL Server uh, Management Studio. Both SQL Server Express and SQL Server Management Studio are both free. Assuming you've got SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio, start SQL Server Management Studio. Once you've started SQL Server Management Studio, this is what should greet you. If Object Explorer isn't visible, you can select View Object Explorer. The first thing we need to do is to connect to a database if it hasn't connected already. So click connect object, connect here, and it'll probably default to the uh, SQL Express local DB. Select that, and that will connect us. We then have a series of folders down here. The one we're interested in to start with is databases. And if you click on the plus, you'll see that there's some system databases and some database snapshots. We can ignore those. Hi highlight databases, right click and add new database. And we're going to call it birthdays. So in the top here, under database name, enter birth dates. And then click OK. There's no need to bother about these entries down here. So just click OK. And we now have the birthdays database. The next thing we need to do is to add 
the birthdays table. Uh, there are two ways of doing this. If I open up birthdays, we can see tables here, table folder, which will be empty apart from system tables, file tables and external table folders. But if I right click here, I can click new. There, as I say, there are two ways of adding tables, the, the hard way and the easy way. The hard way is going to be what I'm going to show you now. The easy way is to use a, a script and I'll show you that later. Now, I'm to, to, to save you uh, watching me type this in, I'm going to speed this up. So those are the, the columns and their data types. Person ID is unique identifier. That's going to uh, be a GUID. I've entered the uh, first name, last name, and send it reminder to as Envar Charles. Uh, this will allow the use of Unicode and is slightly, uh, saves us a small amount of space. If we used uh, Varchar, it would always reserve the amount of characters that we have here. And since we've got variable length, first name, last name, and send email reminders to, uh, we'll, we'll have the NVAR char. Date of birth is just a date, not a date time. I'm not allowing nulls in any of these. I'm going to make the person ID as the primary key. Uh, so I highlight that column and click this little button here that says set primary key. And the other thing we need to do to make it automatically add uh, GUIDs for us. That's not going to add them for us. It's going to think we're going to put them in ourselves. It's under default value or binding. We want new ID, open close brackets. And that should save the, uh, the table. So that's the, the hard way of doing it. But I think it's, it's more interesting in a way because you get to see uh, what some of the options are uh, and so on and so forth. So, for example, if we just look at this, you can see the kind of the other field types we could be using there. So I'll save that. And I'm going to call it person. And if I select refresh, we'll see the person table down here. So that's the, the hard way uh, to add a, a table. The easier way, if you've already got it, is to use a script or to write to your own script. In the description to the video, I will put a link into a web page uh, where I describe what we're doing. Uh, in this video and in that uh, web page I will also include this script. So to use a script click new query and I've got the script I need in here so I'll copy that paste it in here and this is the script so it says use the birthdays database this is the bit that does the the hard work it creates the table with all the columns in it and uh, adds the uh, primary key and this bit at the bottom uh, adds the new ID so that we get a new GUID for every new record that we add. Now I can't run this because we've already got a person there. Um, so I'll just close that. We now need to link our Visual Studio project with the Birthdays SQL database. Uh, and this is achieved by ascertaining a connection string for, uh, for the SQL database and then entering that in a file called appsettings.json um, and making another, uh, another couple of configuration changes. So the easiest way I found to do this is if you go back to the Visual Studio project and select view and then SQL Server Object Explorer and we'll get this popping up. It will probably open with the connection to the correct 
SQL Express server there. But if not, uh, if you click the plus sign, this window will open up and we can select local and the local DB or whichever SQL Express uh, entity you, you select you, you added it's almost bound to be this one here then just connect click connect we then scroll down and open up the databases and we should see our birthdays database there now this is if you right click on the if you right click on that and select properties this uh, properties window opens but what you actually have to do I'm going to close that temporarily what you have to do to get the connection string and it's most peculiar you have to expand it first then if you click it and select properties we get a much fuller uh, list of properties to do with the database here and I've got this organized by alphabetical you could do it by type but if you go back to alphabetical you'll find connection string here and what we want to copy is that if you could control a it'll copy it all copy all that and to start with uh, just put it in uh, notepad I'll be coming back to this in a minute I uh, why don't I copy that there this is the this is the item that we want in app settings um, so if I copy that close that and in here we'll see app settings.json if I double click that to open it we don't need that any longer this is uh, the the information that we had in here for uh, Azure uh, all we need to do is at the end of it put a comma and a new section for connection strings and we put your we put the connection string in here quickly going back to notepad it's that that we want and that goes in there so that's added the connection string and we'll come back to using that uh, in the not too distant future but the last thing I want to do in preparation for the, the rest of the project is just to add dapper to to the project and the, I'll close I'll save and close this and we do that by selecting tools New get package manager and manage new get packages for solution and we, with browse selected if we enter dapper here it should find it and the one we want is this one the top one that says dapper by sam saffron and we select the project and install but we need to add some other dependencies as well. The ones we need are Microsoft Data.SQL Client. So if we again browse .SQL Client, this is the one that we want. This is the preferred one, I believe, at the moment. Um, you may see reference to using System.Data.SQLClient, but Microsoft Data.SQL Client seems to be the one that is currently preferred so we install that and accept these terms and the other one we want is Microsoft dot extensions dot configurations dot abstractions install that so to confirm that we've got those installed correctly if you go to the install tab and clear the search here we should see we've got dapper 
Microsoft Data SQL client and the extensions configuration abstractions. The other ones that we've seen in here are to do with the Microsoft uh, Identity uh, Manager that we used for Azure B2C. So that just about finishes where I want to get to on the setup uh, so far for this video. Uh, we haven't quite finished. Uh, we, we now need to actually uh, make the connection between uh, the database and SQL, uh, adding the models and things like that. But that's for the, that's for the next video. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video. I'll put links in the description uh, to anything that I think could be helpful. And the next video should be coming along soon. Thank you very much indeed.